welcome to Women in WP, a bi-monthly podcast about women who blog, design, develop, and more in the WordPress community. Welcome to episode 23 of Women in WP. I'm Angela Bowman. I'm Tracy Epps. And I'm Amy Masson. Our guest today is Allie Nimmons, who Allie works for Give WP, helping nonprofits use their product to accept donations through their WordPress websites. Allie also travels to WordCamps as a speaker ambassador for GoDaddy Pro. Welcome, Allie. Hi. We like to start off each episode by asking our guests to tell us a bit about their journey into WordPress. How did you get started? Okay, so my first introduction to WordPress was um, a job that I had in an agency uh, where I was a junior developer there because I really, really, really wanted to be a web developer. And I found this job on Craigslist that needed a junior developer. Um, and I applied for that job and I got that job. Um, and they used WordPress for all of their sites that they built for their clients, for their sites internally. Uh, and so they asked me if I knew how to use WordPress. And I said, no. And they were like, well, it's really easy and you'll figure it out. Uh, and so I had to very much like learn on the fly. Um, so much so that they used uh, a thing called Jupyter on their sites. And that's what they used to build other client sites. And it took me about maybe six months to realize that that wasn't WordPress. <laughs> like I thought all WordPress websites were built using the same exact thing. And like, that's how you built a WordPress website. Um, but yeah, through that job, I learned a lot about WordPress, about designing and building and security and all of that sort of stuff. Um, and then I branched out on my own and started doing that in, uh, by myself, providing websites for people. And so um, I would say I learned maybe 25% about what I know uh, about WordPress at that job. And then the other 75%, like doing it by myself and having to figure things out on the fly because I told the client I knew and I didn't, so I had to figure it out. So my introduction to WordPress happened slowly over the course of maybe about three years, but that the first meeting uh, was at that, that job at that agency in South Florida. Did you, uh, so you said you started as a junior developer. What did you, did you have a, uh, an interest before that or you just were like, you wanted to be a developer from the get go? Um, so I originally actually majored in theater uh, in college. I was a theater kid from ages five to, I guess, 21 when I left school. Um, and I literally had a moment. I don't remember like where I was or what I was doing, but I remember having like, a conversation with myself where I was like, I need a job that is creative, but will make me money because I really didn't like the idea of being a starving artist like all of my other friends were doing and they were really into it. And I was like, I like, I like stuff, you know, I like, I like money, you know? Um, and I literally was like going through jobs in my head and I was like, like web design or web development, like that sort of industry is very much, um, like as a millennial, people are always telling me like, you should learn how to code. You should work in tech. Like that's the future. So I was like, it would actually really make sense to learn how to create websites. Cause that's really, um, you have to be creative, whether you're designing or developing. I think where they overlap is is creative and creativity and creative thinking. Um, and I knew that I would make more money doing that, doing theater. <laughs> so I was like, I think this is something I should pursue. And when I really started learning about it, like I, I started learning HTML and CSS out of library books. I would go to the library and get these old like books published in like 1985 about coding and learn. I would, I would write out the syntax with a pencil and paper because I didn't have a computer at the time. So I was like, this is something that I can do that's really creative that I think can take me really far. And that once I really started, um, playing with it and experimenting with it. I was like, this is really satisfying. Like there's something super satisfying about making something out of absolutely nothing, which harkened back to my past in theater, which is you're making something out of absolutely nothing. So there was a lot of kind of overlap there as well. I have never heard a comparison for, to WordPress to theater and I love it. I got a and word talk brewing about that, <laughs> that topic. <laughs> That's amazing. But then also, I am amazed that you took it upon yourself to learn code by writing it on a paper and not having a, a computer and knowing that's what you wanted to do. Yeah, 
because I know that I'm, I've always been really bad with languages, even in school, like taking Spanish. I'm, it doesn't, it does not click. I'm not, I'm just not good at that. Like it's, it's something I really struggle with. So I was like, okay, I know that this is a language. So I have to know what the syntax is. I have to know where the brackets versus semicolons go. Like I have to, I have to do understand the vocabulary. So for me, that was really the first step. And I'm still not super great at it. Like code is still not my favorite thing at all. Um, but yeah, that, that was like my first priority was getting the absolute basics down before actually like building a thing that I could like look at on the computer. And also, I just didn't know where to start at that point. Before I got that first job, I didn't know how you actually make code into website. Like, I didn't understand that entirely yet. So I had a lot of the basics down when I got that job. And then WordPress brought me into the actual production of a website. That's awesome. So when I first started, I also got an HTML book. It was yeah. before CSS was around because I'm older. <laughs> um, older than I look. And, um, but I remember thinking that same kind of thing where I was like, oh, okay, well, so this, this is a language and I am also very bad at languages. I have tried to learn Spanish <laughs> many times in high school. And then a couple other times as an adult, um, I'm still failing at it. So, but, uh, the, uh, the learning that the, the language of it, um, was there a particular, was it like HTML or CSS or any other languages, were any of them that you took to easier or anything harder? <laughs> um, really HTML and CSS, when I started moving into jQuery, which was the next like logical uh, step, uh, that's really actually what, where I kind of hit a wall. So I have some very basic, I can sort of look at some jQuery and some PHP and have a very vague understanding of what it does. I can't write it. Um, I'd say CSS is my favorite just because that's like, I feel like it's like when you bake a cake and then you get to put the icing on it, you know, like you get to give it more personality and oomph and like, and CSS is, is like, I'm a very big list person. And to me, CSS is just a list of how pretty it is, <laughs> you know, whereas like all the other ones are a little bit more, I don't you guys know what I mean. They're they're different in that regard, but I love I do like the way that CSS is supposed to be formatted. It's like super duper neat and just like this thing, and now we are going to do this thing, and now we are going to do this thing, and it's that's very satisfying to me. This makes a lot of sense to me because like I I feel the same way, and like I I've been trying to learn JavaScript and jQuery and all that stuff for about a long time as well, and it's just not how my brain works. Um, yeah. And uh, I, I think that you're right, that whole list thing. And it's funny because like I type in lists a lot. And now that makes a lot of sense that CSS, I love CSS so much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you got your books and your paper and your pen and you started learning HTML. Was that before you got the job as the junior yeah. developer? Yeah, that was definitely before. Um, and also what I started learning was like um, design, like concepts of design which I knew from theater school some aspects of like color theory and spacing and things like that um so with my base level knowledge of html and css and my base level knowledge of um design and some marketing stuff that I had gotten into I ended up getting this it started as an internship and then I moved into it as a as a job so they as an intern they were a little bit more likely to be okay hiring me with very little experience and then that was where I got that experience. You mentioned so you found your home in CSS that sounds like you're like one of your homes but you also but you've also mentioned finding your tribe and finding like your community and just within the last year and yeah. t tell us about what that's been like and how that's changed how you're interacting with technology. Yeah. Um, so the first WordCamp I attended was in 2015. I went to WordCamp Miami. Um, and it was really fun and I had a fantastic time and I really enjoyed myself. And then it was like over and I like went back to my life and I kind of forgot all these people existed. And I did the same exact thing in 2017. Like I was like, oh, it's WordCamp time again. And I went and I did that and I had fun. And um, 
it wasn't until this year when I went, I don't know why I skipped years, it was only odd years, um, I met a gentleman by the name of Adam Warner, which I'm sure all of you know. Um, and it is, we had such an interesting meeting in that it wasn't interesting at all. We were in line at registration the first morning and he just turned around and shook my hand and said, hi, how are you? My name is Adam. And I was like, hi, I'm Ali. It's nice to meet you. Got registered and went and sat down and we happened to sit next to each other. And I happened to be the first person speaking that morning and he liked what I talked about. And so we kept chatting throughout the weekend. And by the end of the weekend, we were talking about me doing the GoDaddy speaker ambassador thing. Um, just from that meeting. And so once that camp was over, I was like, okay, wow, cool. I have someone really find me worth investing in. And that hadn't really happened. Not that people were like mean to me at other camps. I just hadn't had that sort of an experience where I really felt like, you know, somebody didn't just come up to me afterwards and be like, oh, nice talk. Cool. Thanks. Like, it was like, hey, I want to like, pay for you to travel because I like the way you spoke so much. Like that really, really made an effect on me. Um, and I knew that it was a community. I knew that if I was going to do this, I couldn't do it halfway. I had to um, invest in the community and invest my time in the community and make connections with people and make friends with people. Um, and so the first podcast interview that I did was with Michelle Ames when she started WP Coffee Talk and she put out a blast like, hey, I'm, I'm looking for, you know, um, people to interview for this podcast. And I was like, this is a great opportunity for me to like, you know, make a, a connection into, into this community. Um, and it was through her indirectly that I got my job at GIF because she also works at GIF. So it's been... And mind you, this has all happened since March. <laughs> so it's been very quick that I've injected myself into, into the community. And since March, I've been to WordCamp Jacksonville, Orlando, New York, and Boston. And then I was also briefly in Seattle where I met Amy. Um, and so just making the effort that I hadn't made previously to talk to people, like, to be at, to keep the Twitter app on my phone instead of deleting it when the camp was over and, you know, being interested in, in people's lives and answering people's questions and starting conversations and jumping into conversations. And, um, I've gotten out of it like so much more than I could put in. And I feel like that's something that a lot of people feel is, you know, you, you reach out and sometimes maybe you ask for help or you help someone else and you get like so much back as far as the personal relationships and having had run my own business for about three years that was remarkably lonely um and like anyone who's run a business or, or done freelancing will know that you know there's there's a very weird like not just loneliness but i remember i had this realization that i'm slightly getting off topic of your question i know um <laughs> Um, it's totally never, fine. This is this is how it goes, and we love it. This is yeah. This is this is answering a question for us. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Good. I uh, fit right in. Um, but yeah, I remember one day having this conversation after maybe about two years of running my own business, and I was like, you know, the only feedback that I ever get on my skills as a designer or a developer are from my clients, who don't really know anything. Like, I don't ever speak to other people who do this and get critiques on my work. I don't ever reach out to other people for help or collaboration or anything. And that's something that you really miss when you're not on a team. And so when I had the opportunity to work at Give, that was the biggest pull for me was being on a team. Because I feel like that's really how you grow when you have other people to bounce off of. So... I mean, in addition to just like the personal relationships that I've built and the friendships that I've built, I mean, I've gotten a job through this community that has helped me grow a lot of my skills. Um, so yeah, the, the community has been ridiculously fantastic and, and especially very supportive of me being a black queer woman in this space is kind of an interesting, it's interesting waters to navigate and everyone has been supportive, either been supportive or actively helped me 
to have a platform to talk about that and to talk about how it feels to do that. I've never had anyone tell me like, you know, this is inappropriate or like you, this, you're being too much with all of this stuff and whatever. Um, I mean, at, at WordCamp US, I'm going to be on a panel talking about creating more diverse and inclusive spaces. And they reached out to me to talk about that because I won't shut up when I go to camps talking about, and you know, good for you. Yeah. It's, I, I feel like I might be having building sort of a reputation now because I kind of divert every single conversation into like, um, a slightly like social justice warrior type of conversation, but well, you and me both, my focus is on diversity and UX, but pretty much that's what it always goes to. Mm -hmm. So we have some overlap there, which is amazing. And yeah, that's, I've kind of found my niche already in this community and I'm just, I'm that girl that talks about that sort of stuff rather than code. Cause I don't really know that much about code, but yeah. So for, because I agree completely about the, the, the space and I remember very, very vividly, I was like, you know, I kind of floated around some word camps and some of this stuff here, but I was like, oh, but then I realized that like there was a lot of people in this core community that like knew each other. And I was like, oh, well, how do you get into that? And then I did a kind of a social experiment and literally you just go speak at a couple things and introduce yourself to a couple people. Um, but not everyone necessarily like uh, it feels comfortable doing that so what kind of tips would you get because you have taken full advantage of this and really benefit from this so like what kind of tips would you give other people who want to get into this community or to learn more um, and to establish themselves uh, like you have that's a really good question and I think it's it is hard because I did have a lot of those moments where it's like yeah I see you know a group of people whose names I just know because I know who they are and I'm just sort of like I can't talk to them are you crazy <laughs> like that's insane um but I've what I've realized is that very rarely in this community do people think of themselves that way like all of the people that I've met and talked to who I had at one point been afraid to meet and talk to I didn't give a crap about like being like wordpress famous like they wanted to talk about, you know, whatever we happened to end up talking about. So like, I had a great chat with Morton Hendrickson about uh, diversity the other day, like we had this super long, like Twitter DMs chat about making inclusive and safe spaces in the community. And I was like, Morton Hendrickson was the very first person I ever saw speak at a WordCamp in 2015. And he set the bar so high. And I was so intimidated to talk to him for what, four years. <laughs> And he's the nicest person in the whole entire world, you know? And so my advice would be think about why you might be nervous to talk to somebody. Cause I feel like what we do a lot of times is we put that on ourselves. Like we tell ourselves that that person or that connection is inaccessible. And no, like nobody else has told us that no other um, outward factors have proven that to us. We've just decided that like, I'm not worthy enough or, you know, I don't want to, whatever. Um, so like be mindful about where you're coming from as far as, you know, reaching out to other people. Some people are just shyer or like more shyer, more shy um, or introverted. And so it, it doesn't feel good to, to push and talk to people out of the blue. So listen to that. Um, but don't limit yourself by believing that, you know, you don't have something to contribute or you don't have something to say. So for example, there was um, a wonderful guy that I met at WordCamp Jacksonville, Orlando, WordCamp Orlando, I get them confused. Um, and he was really, really nice and really sweet. He runs a business, very sweet guy, um, very, very knowledgeable. And I started trying to like pull him into the community and like get people to follow him on Twitter and join him into conversations. Um, that's been hugely successful. And his name is Chandler, by the way. I'm like acting like I need to protect his identity. His name is Chandler. He's wonderful. Um, and I told him the other day when Michelle posted about WP Coffee Talk, I tagged Chandler and I'm like, you, you should reach out and apply to be on this podcast. I think you would have a lot of really cool things to say. I think you and Michelle would enjoy each other's company. And he literally said, like, I don't have, I don't know what to say. Like he saw like Josh Pollock's name on the list of, of past guests. And he was like, I, I can't follow Josh Pollock. And I was like, 
you have a completely unique story to Josh Pollock. So of course we want to hear that from you. And I think that's really the way that you have to focus on it is I have something to offer. Maybe I haven't, oh my gosh, sorry. That was my microphone. That's okay. Cause we're a very professional podcast. Okay. Oh, we never make mistakes um, ever. <laughs> Put it right here. Um, yeah, maybe maybe you don't, maybe you haven't, uh, you know, launched a super successful plugin company, but that's not why people talk to Josh Pollock. People talk to Josh Pollock because he's sweet and interesting and intelligent. So is Chandler. So they're equally worthy to be uh, in this community and, and involved. Um, so yeah, I think that's the advice I would give is, is be mindful of why you're holding back. Um, and remember that you do have a unique story to tell and you do have unique things to offer into the community. I really, really, really love your term WordPress famous. <laughs> and I really think that we need to make shirts that say that and we all need to wear them together. Yes. Oh mean. gosh, that could be our merch. <laughs> Wouldn't that be amazing? WordPress famous. And if everyone. WP, WordPress famous. Yes. <laughs> Well, I really identify with what you said about being isolated when you're at home. Um, you know, I didn't go to a WordCamp for like the first seven years of my business. And then the first time I did, I was afraid to talk to people. So now I have this big, you know, I have all these WordPress famous friends and I can go talk to them at WordCamps and um, your tips are just, they're great. Yeah, I... Um I was struck by, you know, you mentioned a few men, Adam being one of them. Um, also, Joe um, Casabono, Bona. I don't know if I'm saying his name right. Yes, yeah, so Casabona. Casabona. Mm -hmm. And um, I was just kind of love that these men in the WordPress community have supported women. And I've certainly felt that from different men in the WordPress community. And in terms of just people you feel like have helped you to feel more welcome, is there, is there anyone else in particular, or can you talk more about um, Joe or other women that have, you felt like have really encouraged you and how, how much that maybe has helped you? Yeah, absolutely. Adam Warner is definitely at, at the top of my list. Um, Cause he really like that initial connection and opportunity that he gave me really kick-started everything like I wouldn't have the job I wouldn't be here talking to you guys if it hadn't been for him um Joe Casabona for sure has been very very supportive um that was the second podcast recording that I did was on on his and he really gave me a platform to talk about being a woman in this space and we talked about like, like him having a new daughter and what that's like and and you know all of those sorts of things um I will say Matt Cromwell and Ben Meredith, who are my two, I guess, Ben, I guess, is like my supervisor, and then Matt's like my boss. Yeah, I guess so. Um, they've been fantastic, because the job that I give that I started, I, I provide tech support, and going from having my own schedule, having my own life, the way I structure it, you know, having my own services, the way that I want to do them, like handling everything myself, to sitting in front of a computer for eight hours straight and staring at a list of people who are angry and need me to solve their problem right now. Like that is incredibly nerve wracking and difficult. And I've had to learn, I mean, we have the plugin and then we have like 20 some odd add ons that I've had to learn how they work, how they don't work, like everything so quickly. Um, and daily they're giving me, support and encouragement and reaching out and saying like you are doing a good job <laughs> like we can tell you're stressed it's okay <laughs> like they've been so unbelievably support like I it, and it goes back to that feeling of going so long not having other people in your field um encouraging you just because they're not there right so you get this feeling of oh I'm awesome I'm building these fantastic websites but are you like if the only people who are looking and, and critiquing your, your your websites are clients are you so to have these two extremely talented developers look at my work and say you're doing phenomenally like that I, I try not to be one of those people that 
um, relies on like other people's, um, you know what I mean? Like other people complimenting me and things like that, but it means more than I can say, um, when, when they're that supportive of me. Um, who else? Uh, Christy Chirinos has been hardcore in my corner as a friend. Um, and she's super unique because I feel like a lot of people in the community are like super duper, like we've been like warm and fuzzy and lovey dovey and happy. And like, we, we love each other and we love this community and we love talking about how much we love it. And she is like that, but she's also sort of like, you know, also remember that WordCamps are business opportunities for a lot of people. Like a lot of people are still walking around with their business and their bottom line in mind. And, you know, there are some people out there who are not the greatest and who we can't trust with every bit of our hearts. And, you know, she, she reality checks me when I need it, which is incredibly helpful, but she does so without being like mean or bitter, which some people can be sometimes in that role. Um, but she has been, and she actually, I should give her credit. She coined the WordPress famous uh, term to me. Cause I remember her telling me like, that all that, the, the WordPress famous thing is BS. Like it doesn't mean anything. Everyone's the same. Like don't be afraid of these people. Um, who else? Oh my God, I know I'm forgetting people. See, I've always called them the cool kids, but WordPress famous <laughs> is so much better. And yeah. I do, I do think and it's, it's a real thing. It's going to look better on a t-shirt. It's going to look better on a shirt. I do think, I do think that it is a thing. Like there is the cool kids club and it is intimidating for those of us that are not in the cool kids club. So I think when I have my WordPress famous shirt and I wear it around at word camps, then maybe I'll be in the cool kids club. I don't know how it's going to go. I think that's how it works, right? Right. I don't so know. I, I wasn't to... a cool kid in high school, but I'm assuming that's what it, what you, what it, how that works. So what I'm hearing is I need to send her a shirt. Yeah. Yeah. Obviously. I think she'd get a laugh out of it. Got it. <laughs> um, I'm trying to think who else has been really awesome. Um, Chris Weigman has been a really good friend. Like he, Literally, when I started at Give, like, he um, Twitter DM'd me to, like, check in on me because I was kind of tweeting about how stressed I was. And, you know, he and I kind of had a little, like, mental health check-in with each other, which was really cool. Um, there's so many other people that I'm, like, blanking right now. But uh, David Bissett is a fantastic human being. Um, I literally went up to him at WordCamp Orlando uh, at the, like, VIP speaker dinner thing, and I just said, like, I want to say this in your eyeballs. Thank you. <laughs> um, because WordCamp Miami is is still, I mean, even though it's my home camp, so I'm kind of biased, I think it's the best camp. That's my favorite one. Um, which any other organizer will absolutely murder me. But um, Dave, I Dave, hear that a lot from people. People say WordCamp Miami is their favorite Miami one. Miami is special. I think it's, it's partially because it's so big. Um, that it's, they, there's more they do with it, but David is an incredible leader. He is a great example of a leader who stands behind and pushes rather than stands at the front and pulls, you know what I mean? Yeah. And he's always highlighting people and just lifting people up everywhere. Yeah. I agree with you. Mm -hmm. He's a great human being. Um, the Edwardses I adore, uh, Sandy and Chris. Every camp that I see them at, we end up spending way too much time talking to each other <laughs> and missing talks that we wanted to go to because we're catching up and, and spending time together. Um, in addition to Derosia's, uh, Kate and Topher. Oh, yeah. They're like my, they're like my WordPress parents. Um, Topher had actually, I remember Topher reached out to me to write for Hero Press. And really quick anecdote. When I, I said yes, of course, because that's a huge honor. And then I was like, you know, what, did I say something on Twitter? Did I tweet something? Did I share something that, that kind of sparked you to ask me? Um, so just so I know what you found interesting about me that I can highlight. And he was just like, you're a black woman in this space and we need your story heard. And I was like, Phew. yeah, yeah. Like that, that is, that is a thing that needs to happen constantly. So speaking of that, because I also very much um, am always kind of go towards the, we need more diversity. We need to uplift the voices that um, are not always heard um, because there's lots of us out there. Um, so because I know you're so passionate about it. So 
tell us some ways that either you have seen or that the WordPress community can help and people can learn to make space um, and make a very inclusive and welcoming environment. Um, I could ask this at like for companies and culture companies or whatever, but even just uh, people in general. Yeah. Um, the first thing you can do is go right now. If you listen to this podcast, pause it and go sign up for the um, workshop on October 6th, which is basically a dry run that we're giving of our WordCamp US diversity and inclusion workshop. Uh, so if you, for whatever reason, can't make it to US or you're doing something at that time, that is literally all we talk about for an hour and a half. So that's a really good point. And I actually wrote um, a diatribe on this topic. So I'm going to go back into that and try and remember <laughs> the things I said. Um, to so the first will publish, oh, I'm sorry. This will no. publish after WordCamp. So oh, is there a way that people can get to that? And, and we'll, we'll definitely tweet it out beforehand if you can give us a link and stuff. Sure. Right? But if, is there stuff like maybe your workshop, will it be recorded at WordCamp USA? And we could- I'm 99% sure that it'll be recorded. Um, that's what they've, they've, they've told us, like, you know, barring an act of God, it's meant to be recorded. Um, so yeah, if you're watching this after WordCamp US, then go find that recording on WordPress.tv, um, or, or find me on Twitter and ask me for it and I'll send you a link to it. Um, the first things that I will always say is to speak, to know when to speak up, but also to know when not to speak. So if you are noticing hey, I'm in an environment that looks very homogenous. There's not really a diverse group of people here. Say something about it. You don't have to yell and scream and curse and like make a huge fuss, but talk to whoever you can talk to and let them know that you don't really find that acceptable, that you'd like to see some sort of change. Just the other day um, on the GiveWP website, which we're working on a redesign right now, so maybe by the time this comes out, it'll be redesigned, um, across the bar, across the top bar, there are a bunch of like people's faces. It's just like a part of the design. It's this like, look at all our happy customers, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, there's no black people in there. It's entirely white people. <laughs> so I went mm -hmm. into Slack and I was like, hey, Matt, what the heck? <laughs> and he explained why that was. It was like pulled from a pool of so on and so forth. And they're going to be removing it anyway, and blah, 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 blah. But those are instances where you can say, hey, this doesn't sit right with me. Um, why is this like this? Can it potentially be made more diverse? This is something that's important to me. Um, and ad in addition to that, you know, speaking up in terms of speaking up for other people. If you notice that somebody is being mistreated or if you notice that um, somebody is being ignored or, you know, any of those sorts of things, if you are in a position of privilege and power, it is your responsibility to say something um, to help them because their voice is smaller than yours in that moment. Um, but it is also your responsibility sometimes not to say anything. Um, and that really comes in with listening and just like doing what Tracy just did and saying like, what, what can I do? Like explain to me what I can do <laughs> to help you. And then listening and taking that as fact, uh, and not dissecting it and not trying to make excuses for other people, but listening and understanding that your experience is not universal and it is not universal so that means that um that, that person's experience is not any more true or less true than your experience they are equal to each other um, mm, i like that thanks that's, really <laughs> that's great yeah. um what was the other thing that i say sometimes in addition to that kind of bouncing off of that idea Educate yourself on your own time. Um, it's great to go up and ask people uh, what you can do to make their environment better. Or I literally had someone out of camp ask me, why is there still racism in this country if nobody in living memory has been or has owned a slave? And I started in 1865 and I explained to him why. Um, you didn't punch him in the face? No, because <laughs> he asked me very respectfully. Okay. Because he wanted to know. If he had been like, well, why is it that, then like, I don't have time for that. If somebody yeah. asks me a question and they're actually wanting to learn in order to improve the way that they treat other people, I'll talk to you all day about that. Um, it's, yeah, it's when people are rude about it that I don't 
I don't try to engage. Um, and you're very, that's very patient of you to, to do that because it's not your responsibility, which is. Exactly. And, and yeah. that's the next point is it really isn't uh, the responsibility of, um, I, I don't like even saying minority communities because we're typically, we're not usually the minority, um, disenfranchised communities. It's not really our responsibility to educate you. Um, Google's free. <laughs> Google's yeah. free. Um, so like I had, I had a couple people ask me what queer means because I use queer to identify myself. So I explained to them what queer means to me. Um, but you can also, you can Google that. I know that the, the queer community has a lot of, um, letters in the LGBT, LGBTQIA plus. And we I keep adding more. It, uh, alphabet I can't keep up. Yep. Um, so Google it. <laughs> Look it up, watch a couple YouTube videos, get an understanding of it, and then you can be more informed on your own as well. Um, so those are those are a handful of things. In the presentation, we have a ton of other things. I can also link you guys to the blog post that I wrote on this topic, which has, um, it's very, very long and has a ton of information um, that people can use to educate themselves on their own time. <laughs> It's perfect. Yeah, definitely. We learned that in like the sociology of education. Like it's not the, the it's like the dominant culture, if you want to call it that, whatever, who's ever dominating. It's like, it's their responsibility to help the, who's ever in the non-dominant culture, women, people of color, you know, whatever that might be mm -hmm. to, um, to come up. But yeah, it's like, it's, it's on them. And so I think it is important to, to say that. And I, I experienced that at a lot of conferences where we don't have a lot of female diversity. And I always hear like, well, we're trying, we're, we're trying. And it's like, well, you're not trying hard enough, you know, yes, try hard to be intentional. To like, you have to be intentional. It can't be like this passive process that you're just going to automatically attract. Invite them and they will them. come. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Yeah. Works exactly. never. <laughs> uh, yeah yeah exactly and uh, one of the things is um i i like um uh, when you when you use the language of like making a, a a space for it because that's really um that's really key like i um have found myself feeling very comfortable also as a queer person in the wordpress community because there was intentionality there was like a space made um already there it wasn't because I showed up. Now they're like, oh, okay, it's okay. But it was like, it was already there so that I felt comfortable um, that I w and safe that I could be in that space. Yeah, for sure. And I felt, I definitely felt that way too. Um, and seeing other people, like people like yourself um, and uh, David Wolfpaw, who was one of those people who I was terribly afraid to talk to. And now we're like, I love him so much. Um, seeing other queer people um, and seeing that they are comfortable and thriving in the community made me feel like, okay, this isn't gonna be a barrier for me. Like for me to say I'm queer and like, you know, make that public knowledge, I don't feel like people are gonna be like weird about it. And that's always an interesting, like when you're coming into a new space, having to navigate like, okay, what are people's reactions gonna be in XYZ scenario. And so that's, that's another great thing about the community is, is people are just like, okay, cool. And I do feel like over, you know, talking as somebody that is just a, you know, your white lady that doesn't have anything unique. Um, I would say, <laughs> Tracy's laughing. Um, I think in the last just five years alone, people's acceptance and embrace of, you know, everybody of all different, you know, types is really come a long way. I agree. I think even from that first camp that I went to in 2015, I think it's come a long way. I think it still has a long way to go. Um, For sure. I was talking to somebody that I was trying to get to agree to apply to speak at WordCamp Miami for next year. Um, it was a, a black gentleman that I met down here in South Florida. And I told him like, I haven't seen, meaning that in the talks that I've gone to personally, not to say that there aren't any, but in the talks I've been to, I haven't seen any black male speakers in those, what, six camps that I've been to this year. 
even if I have and I'm like forgetting one, that was still just one. <laughs> yeah, just one. <laughs> exactly. You know, and so I was telling him, you know, yeah, it is a really diverse and inclusive and, and a welcoming space, but it could be a lot better. Um, and like we were talking about just now, like, yeah, it, it is the responsibility of the more dominant group to bridge that, but it's also our responsibility as the less dominant group sometimes to step up and, and where we can feel safe and comfortable to do so, claim those spaces. And because, you know, if, if, if I say like, oh, well, you know, I don't, I don't have anything to say or I don't have anything to contribute, then n n nobody sees me. And that space is that much less diverse. So I think it's all kind of this cyclical process, you know? Yeah. And one of the things is like, um, I I'm really glad that you have without i mean you you've stepped into like this like you know i'm gonna speak i'm gonna be a leader in this space um like how did you get started to, like like speaking and how do you um encourage others because i know like a lot of people are like oh i have nothing to say well yes yeah. you do yeah um so that first the first camp i went to in 2015 i went um i was still an intern so i went with my boss because he was speaking um, and he was a very kind of like Gary Vaynerchuk, like entrepreneur sort of a guy, right? So this was like a networking opportunity for him. He wasn't really there for the community of it. Um, but as I said, the first person I saw speak was Morton Hendrickson. So I was like, okay, like, this is something that I want to do. Um, I think that year I also saw Michelle Schlupp and I saw... Oh my gosh, who else did I see? I have to go back and look. But I saw a lot of really, really amazing people that year um, that were ridiculously inspiring. Um, and so, but at that point, I'd only had that job for like three months. So it, I really was at that point where I had nothing to contribute. Like, I was like, okay, once, I, once I'm a little bit further ahead, I'm going to come back and I'm going to apply to speak. Um, cause that seemed to me like some court, some sort of like affirmation that I could make to myself, you know, that if I can get up here and I can speak with these amazing people that like in some way I've made it, you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, 2017, I was like, right, this is, this is going to be my year. And I spoke at the workshop that the freelancers workshop that year. And that was really great. And it also kind of ties back to theater where I like talking, like I like standing up on a stage in front of a bunch of people talking for a while and then they clap. Like that's my bread and butter, you know what I mean? Um, so the camps were like the, the perfect way to satiate that like interest that I've always had in addition to talking about things that I like talking about in this space. Um, so yeah, it was, see, it was the best of both worlds. See, I have things to say, but I don't want to stand up in front of people and have them clap. <laughs> that freaks me out, but I have tons of stuff to say. Yeah, and look at you, you have a podcast. That's, that's the why you have a podcast. <laughs> yeah, that's why I need a podcast so I can say it, you know, slowly to small amounts of people instead of everybody at once. So I've, I've you spoken a couple times and wear them. Just, I know. just make t-shirts and wear them everywhere. That's all. So many shirts, I don't know which one to wear first. <laughs> that's awesome. It'll be like a Chinese wedding. Amy will just keep coming in and out like with different t-shirts. <laughs> I'm going to start selling these. I got to get them printed before WordCamp US. Um, I'm excited. So I want to thank you so much for joining us today. It's been so great to talk to you. Before we go, can you tell everybody where they can find you online? Sure. Uh, my website is AllieNimmons.com, A-L-L-I-E-N-I-M-M-O-N-S. Uh, and that's where I like blog and put up all my talk slides and ramble about things and um, let people know what I'm up to. There's going to be a link to this when it's out there on that. Um, and then I'm on Twitter all day, every day, Ali underscore Nimmons. And yeah, that's where I spend most of my time. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you guank guys for having me. This was so much fun to sit and talk with you guys for a bit. Yeah, thank you. Thanks for listening. Follow us on Instagram and Twitter or join our Facebook group. We would be honored if you subscribe to the show. You can find us on Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and iTunes. Finally, 
If you want to be on the show or know someone who would, visit our website at womeninwp.com. Until next time.